Now our top story, county cold cases are gaining some new life. A team of homicide detectives is making headway, utilizing forensic genetic genealogy to help identify victims and suspects in crimes by tracing relatives from DNA profiles. That's right, John, and it's expensive. It's an expensive process with the use of private labs. Tonight in my in-depth exclusive DNA detectives, I break down how it works and how a federal grant is a game changer when it comes to the possibility of solving the backlog of cases. Where we never had answers before or maybe a case had reached its end uh, with plausible leads, it's opened the doors for us to give us new leads. DA investigator Ryan Bodmer heads up the county's cold case unit. He agreed to speak with me while he and his team examine a crime scene from a 1975 homicide case in Calamesa. He says the advancement in technology to develop profiles from different kinds of evidence, including DNA, are helping to push forward and even solve more cold cases. We wanted to know more about the process after a victim in a 1994 cold case death whose body was discovered partially buried in Thousand Palms was identified this past December as Patricia Caviro through forensic genetic genealogy. We took a portion of her body, actually it was a bone, and had that bone uh, forensically examined and developed a DNA sample from it. There's an underappreciation, I think, for the number of unidentified remains in this country. Um, the National Institute of Justice calls it the silent mass disaster. David Middleman, the CEO of Othram Labs, worked with investigators on the Patricia Caviro case. He says the FBI's criminal justice DNA database, known as CODIS, can only go so far in identifying a victim or criminal. Their DNA must already be in the system. He says his work opens up new pathways and leads for the identification of a victim or suspect in a crime. And we can essentially build profiles from any kind of evidence, evidence that's been uh, discarded uh, as or designated as unusable. Maybe, maybe you've heard uh, folks say that there's not enough DNA or the DNA is uh, too degraded. Something, something about that DNA makes it unsuitable for analysis. We take these cases that have failed other methods and other laboratories, we bring it in and we're able to build really great profiles. What do you say to people that find this a bit controversial? You're only looking at uh, profiles and at uh, really at relationships to profiles that, um, that come from folks that have consented or opted into the process. In Patricia Caviro's case, genetic genealogy unlocked leads and ultimately identified her biological children. DA investigator Bodmer says the advanced technology and using the outside lab is a game changer, but it costs a lot of money. And you just got a grant, so how does this help? Oh, it's a tremendous amount of help. Although we got pretty good laboratories in Riverside County in the state of California, um, everybody's got resources. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those resources are very, very limited. Mm -hmm. uh, so by going out and getting federal grants for us to uh, use that money specifically to target DNA testing in private laboratories and such, it's unbelievable. Detective Bodmer and his team have had seven cold cases brought to conclusion in the past year and a half, and he says the federal grant gives them more opportunity to chip away at a backlog of cold cases. It really is fascinating what they can figure out so many years past the event. Karen, is this the uh, same technology that was used to catch the Golden State Killer? Yes, genetic genealogy helped identify Joseph D'Angelo Jr., a serial rapist and murderer who eluded capture for decades. The difference now, though, John, is that the forensic science is even more advanced and profiles of victims and suspects from trace evidence are more precise. Law enforcement has a better chance now of finding a genetic match or family relation to help generate leads to solve the case. For more information and an in-depth look at what the cold case team is doing and what else the lab does to help law enforcement, head to our website, KESQ.com.